from very simple things, like you go back to the Greeks, so Aristotle and the great, you know, very clever people, but they thought the Earth was at the centre of the universe. Why? Because it feels like it's at the centre right. of the universe. It feels like we're not moving. Um, and that's quite a deep point, actually, in physics. It's like, why is it that we're flying around relative to the sun very fast at whatever speed it is, 18 miles a second or something like that, and the whole solar system is going around the Milky Way galaxy and so on. But why is it that we don't feel it? And um, the Greeks quite naturally said, well, because we're at the center of the universe. They also said everything falls towards the Earth, so therefore the Earth must be at the center. It's it's natural. Right. And, and actually it's quite a deep... Uh, thought to, to understand why it doesn't feel that we're moving it, uh, you have to go all the way to einstein really for someone to take that very seriously and he what well, he said actually he said well this um th there's a great little explanation in stephen hawking's brief history of time about this that the idea that you can't tell whether you're moving or not demolishes the notion of absolute space so if we think about space if i said space to you or most people i suppose you'd think it, the way that newton did of a big box within which things happen and that's got to be the, that's a natural picture of space and the universe isn't it it's a, a thing in which all the planets and galaxies are placed but um in in the brief history of time hawking says well imagine bouncing a ball so we bounce a ball on the table now a tennis ball so i drop it and i catch it again um so let's say i drop it and it takes a second to bounce up so in that second, the Earth has moved about 18 miles or so in space around the sun. So you could ask the question, did that ball return to the same place in space or not? And the answer is, you can't answer it. You, it does from our perspective. But from the perspective of someone watching the Earth go all the way around the sun, it went up by and caught it again. It had moved 18 miles. And then from some other perspective, it would have done something else. So the point is, you can't say this is a point in space. It came back to the same place because that just depends on your perspective. It depends on whether you're watching the sun, the earth go around the sun or whatever it is. So so Einstein said that means there's no such thing as absolute space, Ugh. which is, kind of follows if you think about it. But that's a difficult, it's, it's a cool but difficult thought process. Right. I mean, that's that's essentially what's happening when you're on a plane. I mean, if you're throwing a ball up in the air and catching it on the plane, it's happening on a much smaller scale, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're flying at whatever, 600 miles an hour relative yeah. to the ground. But it doesn't but seem like it when you're sitting there. Yeah. And Einstein elevated that to a principle and said, if you're moving at, a beauty, if you're not accelerating, you're just moving at a constant speed in a plane or now. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing now. We're moving around the sun at effectively constant speed. Then you can't tell. So there's no experiment you can do. We could look at the decay of a radioactive nucleus or some electricity and magnetism or bounce a ball, have a pendulum, whatever it is. And there's no experiment you can do to tell you whether you're moving or not. Therefore, that concept has no meaning because you can't measure it. <sighs> and that, well, led, that's led Einstein to relativity. Wow. So that, that's the, the basis of general relativity, which is our best theory of the universe.